Hello and welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Oase and today we're going to be talking about Cobb e-tuners. What are they? How do we deal with them? I've actually had a few questions from the community so far about, you know, hey, what do I do with my Cobb? Or I just bought an e-tune. What are my next steps? Or my tuner wants me to do this, but I don't really understand. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We have a lot of new, uh, new Subaru owners and this is a great time to put out something like this that can probably help you guys. So, before we get started on that, I do want to say thank you to everybody who, who uh, participated in the giveaway. The giveaway is actually now over. Today was the last day. I think it ended, I think, maybe like an hour, hour and a half ago. Um, I'm really happy the way that it went down. We had 174, 176 entries, which is a lot more than I expected. I only have 10 packages to send out. Uh, the website does have the ability to pick winners, so I'm going to have the website randomly pick 10 people. I do have your emails, so I will send you an email letting you know you won, and, you know, we'll just get them out to you. Uh, anyway, what I want to do is I want to take this in two different sections, or maybe three different sections, I'm not sure how many sections, but basically go through the whole process of what it is like to do an e-tune, uh, and what do you need to do, and how do you need to do it. First things first, you have to decide, do you even want one? I think you do. Um, is an e-tune different than a protein? Not really. This is a question that's come up and we're going to talk about this in greater detail on Tuner Talk, but for the purposes of this video, the basic answer is it's pretty much the same thing as a, as a protein, except you are not going to a physical dyno. The dyno is you and you driving around uh, for your tuner. Uh, basically what they will do is they will send you a map, which you will then load onto this guy, which you will flash onto the car. They will ask you to do some logging, which is really, really simple to do. You will send those logs back to your tuner and they will go through and make sure everything's okay and keep doing this back and forth until your tuner is happy with the results. It seems super complicated, but it actually, it is very easy and I find it a lot of fun. The first time when I had my 2021 WRX, I went through Shinji tuned and I did get an e-tune. Um, it was great. You know, it took a little bit of time because we were constantly dialing, dialing it in back and forth. Um, there was a couple of days delay, but that's that's the difference here. You either you spend time or you spend money, right? If you can do a pro tune and go to a dyno and do a tune, I think it is a really fun experience, but not everybody has that capability. Anyway, so let's get started. So step one, you pick a tuner, you order an e-tune. They do whatever they need to do. They'll email you a base map which you will then load onto this guy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this up and we're gonna look at how everything works. Okay, first things first, you wanna get yourself a micro USB cable, plug your access port to your computer. Uh, I have found that different cables provide different results. Some work, some don't. This cable I have is actually from an old uh, Blackberry, if you can believe that. So now that it's plugged up, I'm gonna leave that here. You're gonna need Access Port Manager. If you don't have this, you can actually head to COPS website, download it for your operating system, really easy, really fast. Once you have it downloaded, you got the Access Port plugged up, you will double click on Access Port Manager, open that up, and you'll see it'll do a bunch of things. Uh, it may tell you that there's an update, it may tell you that it can't read in data. So right now it looks like I have a firmware update, but I'll do that later. Uh, so now what you're looking at here is the access port, or you should be looking at the access port. And these are all the maps that are loaded here. And up here, this filter section, this is pretty much what you're gonna be messing with. So you can change it from maps and you can change it from dialogs. But we're gonna start with maps first. So we're gonna use this uh, map as an example. So let me close. So you have two ways that you can do this. You can either drag or drop, or you can use the save button. I usually just use the save button because it's it's, easy. So let's say, let me just resize some of this. Let's say you, you purchase an e-tune and your tuner sends you your first base map and you need to get it onto the access port. Save it out of your email, wherever you want to save it. You can then go into the access port on the side here. There's a couple of buttons. So you're looking for the import button, which is the third one down, click it, find where that map is. In this case, this is the map that I'm looking for. Select it, open, It'll ask you, do you want to copy? You hit yes, and boom, there it is. Stage zero, version 110.btm. That's it, it's that easy putting a map on. Um, what I'll do is I'll take this step by step. This is the first step. You need to get the map onto the access port. Next, we're gonna go back to the car, and I'm gonna show you 
uh, we're not going to obviously we're not going to flash this one, but I'm going to show you the next step, which is when your tuner wants you to data log, and then how to data log and what parameters to select. All right, so we are in the car, and I'm I'm going to tell you this now, what you're about to see on my fingernails. My daughter actually finally got a hold of me, and she painted my nails, and they're all these funky different colors. But anyway, we got the car, and now you need to load up that tune. You got the access port plugged in. You got your car in on mode. You will go down to tune. You will select whatever tune you need to change it to, and you'll install it and move on from there. Now, once the tune is done, you know, before you, either you have the car on or if the car is like, if the engine is actually on, either way, you'll go to your gauges section. This is where you will go to a section that allows you to select the parameters for your data logging. Your tuner will actually tell you what they want. So once you're in this section, you will hit the up arrow or rather the up button until it makes it to the green arrow. You hit the center button, you go to configure data logging, and this will now show you all of the different parameters that you can select to data log. And you will go through and you will, you know, if, if it doesn't have a green next to it, you just hit the center button, it'll add a green. That means that that's what it's gonna log. Once that is done, you will hit the back, it will save it, and you're good. Now to actually log whatever you want to log, um, actually, I probably should have said this to you before in the first section is make sure to delete all of the logs from the access port. That is the best way to keep track of what you have because the access port doesn't do a great job of naming them. It actually just names them data log one, data log two. And then, excuse me, in this next section, I'll show you what I mean about clearing out all the logs. But let's say, for example, your access port is completely empty. To actually log something, when you're ready, you will just, from this screen, you'll just hit that center button. And then once this starts going, that means it is logging. And this actually, I believe that's one second. And once it's done, once you have whatever you need to log, you just hit the button again and it will stop logging. And that now creates a file, a CSV file called data log whatever number. If you have none, if you have no data logs on this access port right now, it will name that log data log one. And so you'll know, okay, my first log was the car running idling with no AC and I logged it. That was data log one. You can kind of keep track of that. What I did was I actually, when I did all my logs, as I was doing them, I just wrote down on my phone what that individual log was. So I knew what it is when I go back. So you do all of your logs, collect everything you want to collect. Your tuner will tell you exactly what they're looking for. Once you're done with that, you'll come home. This portion is now done. You will then unplug the access port, go back downstairs to your computer, and here I'm going to show you how to pull the logs off. Okay, logs are done. We're back at our computer. Now we need to get the logs off. Plug in my access port, open up the access port manager. Now from here, what you're going to be looking for under filters is data logs. So we'll change this from maps to data logs. And you see that I have tons of uh, data logs here already saved. Whatever it is I created. In your case, it's however many that you'll have created. To get these off, what I like to do is create another folder. So in this case, I created a folder called test. I will select a log or hold shift and select multiple logs. Click this button right here for save. It will do whatever it needs to do and then ask you, where do you want to save them? In my case, I want to save them in that test folder. I have that created here. Data logs, test, open that, say select folder. It will take a second. And then now when you open that folder, you've got all the data logs that you selected. From here, you can either rename them if you remember what number data log you had, or you can just, uh, well, actually, I would suggest naming them. I feel like that it just makes it easier for your tuner to know what the data log is when they open it, or before they even open it, just for organizational purposes, even for the future. Uh, from here on, you're done. You take this, you paste it in your email, you send it back to your tuner and let them do tuner things. Now, what I was saying in the previous section was, uh, having your logs empty. So what I would do is I would, in this case, I have all these here, but I don't need these anymore. So I will delete them. And now when I go to log in the car, there's no logs here. And this way I can keep track of each log that, okay, log number one was, oh yeah, that was me idling. Log number two was idling with AC on and so on and so forth. That's my suggestion. I forgot to delete it before explaining that to you, but that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to it. And once your tuner emails you back with the next revision, 
you do this whole process over again and you will keep doing this until the revision is done or until the tuner is happy and the car you know <laughs> doesn't blow up uh, well that's that's not really something that's going to happen the tuner is going to look through your logs and make sure everything's okay and slowly increase whatever they need to increase until they get to a point where um they feel comfortable and then they'll tell you go have fun um, now there's one other section that i, I do want to show you when you first turn on your access port, there is a little splash screen that turns on and it has a, a picture. Uh, usually, I think it's just like a Subaru logo, but what you can do is you can actually change that to whatever you want. If you click this down here to images, you can you can upload a, um, a picture for the splash screen. I actually, you may or may not have seen it. Uh, I'll try to get a picture of it. It's my splash screen is actually a picture of my car and you can make that to be a picture of your card. So just a fun little thing to do. Now the access port manager does allow you to do updates and stuff. If you go here and see, it'll show you what the latest firmware is. When I plugged it up earlier and I turned on the access port manager, it did tell me that I have an updated firmware that I need to update. You can actually click this button right here to update if you want. When you're done, just click eject access port up here and you're good to go. That's the whole process. Actually, it's it's not very hard. It's not very daunting. But when you get that email from your tuner and there's all these different questions, there's all this information, it can feel overwhelming if you have never done this before. But uh, you know what? I have faith in you. I think you can do it. And for an extra 100 horsepower, <laughs> I know you damn right will. So anyway, I hope that this helps. I hope that uh, you this allows you to see that the process is not so bad. And again, if you have questions like most of you have been doing, you, you definitely reach out to me or reach out to your tuner. Everybody's here to help. We just want to make sure everybody's safe. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please uh, take care and have fun out there.